MBN Network Media News for all races connecting to the world. This is MBN Network Media News for all races connecting to the world. The whims of the few should never hold dominant sway over the hopes and aspirations of the many. If we are to be a democracy, the people and not the power of money must be sovereign. The preceding administration saw this looming danger as well. Indeed, it made no provision in the 2023 appropriation for subsidy after June this year. Removal of this once helpful device that had transformed into a millstone around the country's neck had become inevitable. Also, the multiple exchange rate, the system that had been established be became nothing but a highway of currency speculation. It diverted money that should have been used to create jobs, build factories, and businesses from millions of people. Our national wealth was doled out on favorable terms to a handful of people who had been made filthy rich simply by moving money from one hand to another. This too was extremely unfair and is not acceptable. It also compounded the threat that the illicit and mass accumulation of money posed to the future of our democratic system and its, uh, its economy. I had promised to reform the economy for the long term good by fighting major imbalances that has plagued our economy ending the subsidy and the preferential exchange rate system were key to this fight. This fight is to defy the fate and future of our nation. Much is in balance. Thus, the fact in our economy immensely profited a tiny elite, the elite of the elite, you might call them. As we move to fight the flaws, in the economy. The people who grow rich from them predictably will fight back through every means necessary. But we are ready. Our economy is going through a tough patch and you are being hurt by it, I know. The cost of oil has gone up. Food and other prices have followed it. Households and businesses struggling. Things seem anxious and uncertain. I understand the hardship you face. I wish there were other ways, but there is not. If there were, I would have taken that route as I came here to help, not to hurt the people and the nation that I love so dearly. What I can offer in the immediate is to reduce the burden of current economic situation, which has imposed on all of us, most especially on businesses, the working class, and most vulnerable among us. Already, the federal government is working closely with states and local governments to implement interventions 
that will cushion the pains of our people across social economic brackets. Earlier this month, I signed four executive orders in keeping with my electoral promise to address some friendly physical policies and multiple taxes that are stifling the business environment. These executive orders on suspension and deferred commencement of some taxes will provide the necessary buffers and headroom to businesses in manufacturing sector to continue to thrive and expand. To strengthen the manufacturing sector, increase its capacity to expand and create good paying jobs, we are going to spend $75 billion between July 2023 and March 2024. Our objective is to fund minimum of 75 enterprises with great potential to kickstart a sustainable economic growth, accelerated structural transformation, and improved productivity. Each of these 75 manufacturing enterprises will be able to access 1 billion credit at a maximum of 9% per annum, with maximum of 60 months repayment for long-term loans and 12 months for working capital. Our administration recognizes the importance of micro, small, and medium-sized enterprises, and the informal sector as the drivers of growth. We are going to energize this important sector with 125 billion. Out of the sum, we will spend 50 billion conditional grant to 1 million nano businesses between now and March 24. Our target is to give a minimum of 50,000 each to 1,300 nano business owners in each of the 774 local governments across the country. Ultimately, this program will further drive financial inclusion by onboarding beneficiaries into the former banking system. In like manner, we will fund 100,000 MSMEs and startups with 75 billion. Under this scheme, each enterprise promoter will be able to get between 500,000 and 1 million added maximum 9% interest per annum and repayment period of 36 months to further ensure that they will work. Sadly, there was an unavoidable lag between subsidy remover and these plans coming fully online. However, we are swiftly closing the time gap. I plead with you, please have faith in our ability to deliver and in our concern for your well-being. We will get out of this turbulence. And due to the measures we have taken, Nigeria will be better equipped and able to take advantage of the future that awaits her. And in a little over two months, we have saved over a trillion naira that will have been squandered on the unproductive fuel subsidy, which only benefited smugglers and fraudsters. That money will now be used more directly and more beneficially for you and your families. For example, we shall fulfill our promise to make education more affordable to all and provide loans to higher education students who may need them. No Nigerian student will have to abandon higher education because of lack of money. Our commitment is to promote the greatest good for the greatest number of our people. On principle, we shall never falter. We are also monitoring the effect of exchange rate and inflation on gasoline prices. If and when necessary, 
we will intervene. I assure you, my fellow countrymen and women, that we are exiting the darkness to enter a new and glorious dawn. Now, I must get back to work in order to make this vision come true. Thank you all for listening. I may God bless Federal Republic of Nigeria. <laughs>